welcome back to another episode of German Custom Bricks. And this is one of those rare YouTube videos. I haven't done any for quite a while, but um, uh, because there's so much to do with this tank, being the Panther V Aus of G, very late war uh, model, that uh, this kind of needed its own little video instead of being confined. I got to hold the phone vertical, you know, for Instagram or whatnot, but I thought this would be better on a, as a video anyway. So. Anyhow, I uh, hope you like the new intro. Uh, we are going on the Aus of G. So here it is, the Panther out 5 Aus of G. Now, it's got all the stickers on it this time, except for, I forgot because you can see the vents, uh, vents back here. There actually should be some back there, and I just realized I forgot those stickers back there. So let's go over some cool stuff on this tank. Well, it is the Aus of G, and of course, it being the Aus of G, it has the sloped sides which is something i haven't really seen anybody else do so it's that's great that's why i like doing the stuff that nobody else has done yet so it gives me a chance to to uh do something unique and original and being this how this is in a dark red as the primary color that lets you know that that is the case so uh being as that this was late war they were trying to save on paint and that's why they used uh on the original which i'll throw some pictures and that up here kind of interspersingly just to show you the original that's in the Bovington uh, Museum in England is that uh, they tried to save using some paint so there was just like uh, tan stripes with a little white line on both sides of the stripes so they basically sent the tanks out in their primer which is what the dark red is, is uh, kind of mimicking is that. So, uh, I guess for, uh, I guess checking out the exterior and that, uh, the only stickers on the exterior are the, the headlight in the front there. Of course, the Balkan quotes on both sides of the turret, uh, on the back here, there is the vents, uh, the engine vents there for the, for cooling or the cooling vents. Uh, one thing to note is if you notice the reason why this, this is too, uh, plates high as opposed to on the other side is because this is actually a uh, a fan that takes some of that uh, hot exhausted air and actually is sending it right back into the fighting compartment inside the tank to keep the crew warm so I thought that was a pretty innovative little idea so I was, I was very happy to put that little detail on the back because that's what you'll see in in uh, you know like this picture here you can see the vents uh, with that with that extra a module on top there for that very purpose so uh, other other stickers are uh, oh, on the cupola you can see the uh, those are just simulate uh, the viewports that are around the cupola and that for the tank commander now uh, one thing on the exterior here with this is if you notice there's a gap there on the on the hatch and that is because this is in the open protected position. So I decided to leave that there. That was actually the best way to attach this thing. So it's open protected, meaning that it um, stays partially open because the commander would not want to lock down the, uh, the uh, hatch completely. Because if there was a fire, they took around, you know, maybe some spalding or whatever come, up, come apart on the inside. Uh, they'd want to get out of this tank pretty fast. The commander can still pop his eyes out without uh, exposing his whole head because at least the hatch is there and he has protection. So uh, there's a good video on that uh, on YouTube by the Chieftain, and he takes a review of a panther. Uh, he did a review and he kind of explained that kind of thing. So I thought that was a great resource, so that's why I'm telling you. So uh, some other good kind of cool details. I got that great little debris guard. That was on the top of the mantle, and the same with the chin underneath there. Um, yeah, on the model, the gun does elevate and depress. The turret rotates 360. And, um, yeah, of course, the track's rolling. Oh, and, of course, the engine hatch. So it does open up in the correct direction. And, of course, you can see an engine in there. That's the uh, 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 Maybach HL230. Uh, P30, I think that is. That's pretty much it for that. And what a cool feature is, uh, well, actually, let me not go too far. Um, the gun, the front bow, uh, bow gun there was actually kind of a unique thing because it's actually 
not even attached to anything. It's just pressed in there, believe it or not. It's just holding itself uh, in there and it won't come out. So that's that was a, a kind of a, a different kind of a design I've ever done. Uh, all the suspension on this has always been, if you, if anyone who's bought any, uh, purchased any of my tanks were Tigers or Panzer IV, Panzer III, every single wheel is independent. There's none that are attached uh, on... Um, little assemblies you know where you have a, a center wheel that's stationary and then the only the ones on each side move no all these ones do so if you wanted to pose this going over a rock or something like that well you can do it it doesn't matter where you do it it's good gravity will take the effect and it'll look real uh, that's probably one thing I don't like about although it's been pretty cool what seeing that uh, uh, a lot of vehicles coming out have been made with uh, suspension you know, basically using the the one by two, those rubber um, Technic uh, pieces, I guess, uh, lift arms, but they're rubber. And that, uh, as cool as that is, you know, when you push down on the tank, it just pops back up again. So you can't really pose it. So to have that suspension just kind of doesn't seem that it's uh, a worthwhile thing to me at all. So uh, that's why I'm probably not going to ever do suspension because I like the playability factor and the display factor you get without using the suspension. I just don't think it's much of a uh, much of a bonus there. Uh, other things are oh yeah sorry the the hatches now the hatches can open uh, without moving the turret. Of course, get, unless you got fat fingers like mine, then you have to kind of move them a bit. But otherwise, uh, it, this you can see the if you can get it in there. Come on, you. Uh, let me get my fingernail in there. There we go. Come on there, buddy. There we are. Sorry. So the, you got a couple heads in there. <laughs> there are guys in there. So you got two. You got the driver and the bow gunner sitting in the front there. Um, there's a little bit of detail in, in where they're sitting there with the controls and such. So I'll, I'll show you that in a sec there after I pull the... I'm going to remove the turret. Yeah, because this has got a full crew of five inside. So, um, yeah, they're sitting in there without any hair or whatnot, just the way it is. I mean, I've, I've crammed as much as I can cram and taken this down as much as I can take it down. I don't think there's anything else I could really do with it. But in any case, so the turret just comes out nice and easy. It's got a turret basket, and you can kind of see you got three guys in there. There's the commander, there's the gunner, and there's the loader over there. And that's so I uh, just set that aside. Now, this... This tank can be made to work with, uh, if you saw the Strabocran uh, model that uh, I did, the kit that I did, that was the crane, and I had it working. If you look back in some previous videos I did, kind of a year or so ago, a couple of years ago maybe, um, where you can see this, the Strabocran working with uh, the Autocarious Tiger 217. Uh, that one has it lifting the turret out of the out of the tank and they use those uh, quite a bit and there's a lot of pictures actually with the panther actually having its turret removed uh, in the Strabocron. so if you want a really cool display piece that set is a good one <laughs> it's a pretty cool one um, so uh, as far as other stuff goes with that uh, you can remove this the top part of this which has the hatches on it and you can see some interior detail in there so of course there's our two little uh, uh, drivers in there and then you can, can kind of see they they come out real easy and that um, Of course the that cool little bow gunner thing here. So let me get this guy. I know I had a little bit of a There he is. Yeah, I have to kind of twist him there to get him in and out But there's a drive shaft in there part of the transmission is up front there um, You got of course you got the turret mount the torsion bars uh, simulation and the batteries that are here on both sides there those will actually be moved forward a bit there was one part change that i missed at the time of making this video which is on the friday um, i forgot to make that part change so that brings the batteries a little bit more forward so you get to see more of that detail because they are do have stickers on them so it's got a fire extinguisher there that's pretty much the big thing and of course i already showed you the engine one last change i did make was the back of this to get this actually flush with the rear deck here uh, and this really came out good now these are what uh, you wonder what these funky black things are on them well those are flame suppressors so when they start the the tanks up or whatnot uh, you know they get a lot of sparks flying sometimes a little bit of flame going on while well, these help keep that uh, from showing off their position or, or giving themselves away with some 
some lighting and whatnot. So that's good. And these are just storage containers on the back too. And then there is an inertia starter back here where they have to hand crank the couple guys get out there and have to hand crank to start to get the engine started, prime it and get it started. So uh, that's pretty much with the uh, lower, the hull here. And of course it has, you know, rolling tracks, which the view is every tank should, right? So uh, there we have that. Uh, I'll just put, bring that stuff back in the frame. And my two guys here. How about that? Two here. I'll, actually, they need a good view viewport there. There they can sit and watch the rest of the show. So there it is. Anyway, the turret and that. This has a, the uh, Brick Arms Panther barrel. So the roof comes off. How about that? Yay! The turret basket in here fits. It just fits nicely on the pin that's in the center there. And, of course, you can see your three guys in there. They're all sitting there, standing there. So they kind of go in. You put your loader in last, and then your commander in second last there, and then your gunner in very la or very first, actually. So he's got a little seat back there and a little seat for the, the gunner there and just to stand. There's not really any room because uh, it is tight in there, and these guys have can only fit in one way. So that was... Uh, one of those cool things there, um, and of course has Balkan Kreutz on the side. So that was one of the cool things with the, this turret. Uh, but I'll just show you that other little feature. We have our commander fellow. Here's the commander here. And if you take him and take his torso apart, I'll show you that. You have to kind of fit him in the in the hatch there, and then he will sit still. He can sit still there, and of course you see because his feet are stuck on the <laughs> thing there. So you kind of have to take him apart, in other words, to pose him on the inside. So he'll just sit, you know, on the hatch like that. So you can just set him right back in there. And that is really cool. Like, there he is. There he's sitting in a hatch. There he is, riding in the panther. But, oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> and that is uh, one of the things that happened in the very late war was they came out with infrared night vision. Now, there's not a lot of documentation about this. Uh, it is called the Sperber 1250 uh, night vision. And um, uh, let's see here. Uh, there isn't much documentation about it, about how many tanks had this on or how successful they were, how, how well it performed in battle. We don't know because there just was not much records at this time because, you know, everything by at this point was confusing, right? The German army's been broken up into smaller units by the Russians and then the Americans, and a lot of them are surrendering and such, and there's still a lot of them that are fighting, and uh, there's no cohesion and no unity anymore because, let's face it, most of their troops, their good troops, were already spent in Russia by the time the Allies invaded. You know, there was just not much left uh, in good uh, professional soldiering there back at that time just because of that. Uh, Russia was just the meat grinder that uh, really did them in. If they hadn't invaded Russia, I think the, the whole landscape of the war would have been a little different, but such is history, and that always hindsight, right? So this is the little Sperber there, uh, night vision module there, that uh, it's really easy to uh, install just on the, on the uh, turret. You just pop off the one viewport uh, right in front of the driver there, and then you mount the night vision right right there so there it is there's night vision so he's there <laughs> so now put him back back in there so there he is there he is fantastic he's just seeing everything he's got to see and shooting at everything he's got to shoot so basically from my understanding so far of this he actually has to uh he would actually uh be in contact with the driver of where he's got to drive and the gunner with how he's got a gun and uh, to lay around on a target. So, but apparently it was pretty good. It is actually, um, which I think was noted, that it was advanced for its time. That, uh, you know, to have night vision in 1945, really? Nobody else had that. So the Germans, as, of, as always, were ahead when it came to a lot of this technology stuff with everything, whether it was from the rockets, whether it was from the atomic bomb, whether it was from helicopters, jet uh, power, they were always just a step ahead, but they could never put in, out anything in the kind of production numbers that they needed. So that's kind of how that one ended. So there you have it. Uh, 
There we go. And there it is. That is the Panther 5, House of G, uh, with night vision, the Sperber night vision. And it. this is the late war variant, with the very sketch, uh, uh, very different color scheme, I will say. I've never seen a tank done in dark red, but I got to say this was kind of fun to throw one together like this. So this kit will come with... Uh, you know, it's going to come with the extra viewport, of course, and with the night vision, so you can display it either way you want it. That's pretty much the lowdown. They will be available uh, for pre-order uh, this Saturday, the 21st, at 12 noon Mountain Standard Time. This kit will not come with minifigures. Uh, so you most most of you guys that are getting stuff anyway, you, you pretty much got your own crews and and whatnot anyway. And this will keep the price down, and it will be that this kit is actually 943 parts, so almost a thousand pieces, and it will be under 300 bucks, and it will be very uh, a, a much better uh, pricing. I've had a review of going through all all my uh, kits and designs, and I just decided. Uh, I think we're getting a little carried away with how much some of the stuff is costing. So um, I've got it gone through a price reduction. How about that? Now, some of the models that uh, people have already purchased and stuff, those kits will not be getting a price reduction. But the, any new kits now going forward will have the new uh, pricing and rating system that I've come up with to uh, apply to all future kits. So uh, there you have it. That is... The Panther. Now, this video is officially over. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye for now from German Custom Bricks.